forum and oh. you're aware that Noreen will not be here tonight, I imagine. No, right? I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. Oh, she's gone she, someplace, hasn't she? She's in the Dolomites. Right. I, I did know. know that. Okay. Well, we've got a quorum and um I don't know what this what's the story with Wim, but we can we can go ahead and have the meeting. I've got overnight guests, so I want to keep it as as short as possible. So sure. so for for the record, this is the Shootsbury Board of Health meeting for um, September 6, 2023. We have a quorum of the Board of Health. We have me, Catherine Hilton, we have Arlene Reed, and we have Garrett Simonson. And um, we have only a couple orders of business. One is the minutes of the previous meeting. Everybody cool with those? Mm -hmm. I have to assume that if I left out anything that Noreen needed on her reporting of NASCO things um, that she would have let me know by now. So let's accept those. Um, 56 Wendell Road, I wrote 156, but it's 56, Greg Steve's house. Um, new wrinkle here, Greg has, um, Greg has, is taking a new tack. He says he's sick and tired of waiting around for other people to do things for him because they haven't been doing them. And so now his new plan is with a bunch of his buddies to start taking the house down themselves from the top. And um, and he said, oh, it's on my phone, which I'm using now, um, that his plan, which he has to run by the building inspector first, but their plan is to take off the top level and possibly the next level, but at least the top and cover it up with the, get that done before the snow flies, cover, cover it up for the winter, and then continue in whatever way in the spring. And that seems like, really, if he'd thought of this a few years ago, he'd be living in a house on that lot now, but- um, uh, Cover it up with what? With a tarp. Okay. I don't know if that would also include um, you know, plywood base or something, but he mentioned right. But tarp. maybe if he got it down to the second floor level, then the tarp would actually be on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it it will be it will be considerably less offensive than it is right now with all the burned rafters up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, he's making some he's making some progress. It's slower than we wanted, but yeah. But okay. there it is. And and there you. haven't been there haven't been any complaints that we're aware of. People are always asking about it, but like there haven't been any that. specific complaints. And the way it looks to me, I mean, the way Greg is managing it, um, it seems to me that there's not a public health threat here. I mean, he um, he has it he has it sealed off so that that people can't get into it. Um, he goes there frequently. He um, because he's been taking stuff out and taking it to the dump and stuff. So it's not like it's not like the urban situation that you could imagine where um, it would be empty and abandoned and there would be rats in it and there would be homeless people or people taking drugs or whatever. It's not it's not abandoned. He's he's caring for it to a certain extent. So um, it's an eyesore. But I don't think it's a public health threat. Agreed. Yeah. So, so that's where we are. Okay. You know, Thanks you for know. finding all that out. Right. Yeah. Whenever I send a text to Greg, I get this long, long text because he's not he's he's not um, concise. So I get these long, long texts explaining mm -hmm. everything, you know, including more things than I really needed to know. Mm -hmm. But, but mm -hmm. there you go. And um, it's good to see that that some decision has been made. So um, we have 5759 Shore Drive and that's um, Gary and Donna West. They had 59 Shore Drive and they had it on a tight tank and their neighbor at 57 sold them his house and they are planning to tear that house down and just um, just expand their their property, keeping the tight tank, however, um, because I think that's 
all that they can do there. So Claudia has reviewed this and she recommends that we, um, that we um, issue the permit. There are CONCOM issues having to do with drainage and stuff. So we'll probably have to wait, but I would like for you to, um, to authorize me to issue that permit when everybody else is ready for it to be issued. Any objections or questions? Uh, well, I guess one question. They are expanding their property, but not looking to expand the size of their house. At, there's no plan I, to. Do I believe that is it. true. I believe that is true. Basically, they're just going to take down this Mike, I forget his name, his house and just have the bigger property. But that's not uh -huh. apparently going to buy them enough space to um, to have a conventional system. Okay. I believe that is the case, but you know, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to check mm -hmm. um, um, because with a tight tank, as you know, we can't, um, we can't authorize an increase in flow. So uh, if an increase in flow. Flow, okay. Which may basically means an increase in the number of bedrooms. Right, but it's also true that a tight tank has to be a last resort. And with an increased property size, it we're um, we're Claudia is certain that it remains a last resort that a conventional system could not be installed. Those are good questions to ask. I haven't followed up on that on mm -hmm. that part of it. Okay. I and I don't know if there's any kind of. Um, you know, grandfathering, like they were approved to have oh, a tight sure. tank and right. would they still be approved even though suddenly their property has gotten larger. Okay. I would think that, I mean, they're having to redo the tight tank for some reason that, I'm sorry, escapes me. Um, I think it has basically to have, has to do with just space, space, spatial mm -hmm. arrangement. Sure. Um, um, why did I, why am I telling that? Oh, so they're having to redo it. I would assume that if they had the, the opportunity to switch over to a, um, a conventional system, that they would probably take it. I mean, even though I, this isn't their full-time residence, so they're not using it all year. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a cheaper install and then it's a, it's a, a bigger, um, maintenance cost but if they're only maintaining it for every you know three months out of the year that kind of makes sense right but i'll check on that well, okay well i i would say i would make a motion that as long as it conforms with um title uh, with i guess the standards would be dep standards for a tight tank yeah right that, um uh that we approve your signing the permit when CONCOM is, when all the um, preliminaries when, are in place. When all the hoops have been jumped through. Yeah. All right. Fire a second. I'll, I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Garrett, yes. Arlene? Arlene, yes. And Kat, yes. Okay. So I will do that, but I'm going to look into it a little bit more and make sure that this is kosher. Um, Claudia okay. did say that it was consistent with Title V. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, and you, you know, it's a waterfront property. It's right on the, the water on one of those little coves that comes up on, um, right. on shore drive. So they right. may be well constrained oh, there. Yeah, right. And setback, various setbacks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, All right. And then so, for, the, for the demolition of that property, do they have, is there anything that the Board of Health has to do? When they come to do it and they're, they're not at that point yet um the they apply to the building inspector for a demolition permit and then and the board of health has to sign off on that mm -hmm. but i would think that it's basically um open and shut there's no reason why we wouldn't why we wouldn't um agree to it and i don't see i don't think it would be our job to impose any conditions on it that'll be concom's mm -hmm. job Okay. Yep. Makes sense. 
Okay. So it may be even, you know, past the next meeting when they get to this because because they have to go through come come and I'm not quite sure what their what their concern is. It has to do with there's some kind of a drain, there's road drainage through the property into the lake. And so they have some concerns about that. Mm -hmm. However, Alan Weiss, who designed this, says that it's um, that it meets the appropriate setbacks for that. So that I think should be open and shut. Although with Concom, nothing ever is. Yeah. Yeah. So the only other well, okay. The, the, here's the thing I have to tell you. Um, you know, Charlie has pretty much entirely retired and he had in his basement all the all the um the district files and now he wants them out and so what he did was or what happened was somebody from Irving somebody's from Irving went and took all the file cabinets and brought them up to Irving Town Hall and the individual towns are responsible for coming and getting their files. It grieves me to report that there are four file cabinets for Shootsbury alone, and um, they want uh, they want them to be empty by September 30th. Four so, drawers or four full cabinets? Four cabinets. Oh, geez. But yeah. like, like the, the four staff? 16, 16 drawers, and what do you get? Yeah. What? You got it. <laughs> yeah. And do we need these files? Probably not. Probably not. Yes. But here's oh here's God. I know it. Here's what I'm doing with this. And rest assured, this is file management. I get paid for doing this. So I mean, nobody would do this for free, I assure you. <laughs> um, um I've gone for the first time. I spent quite a bit of time at town hall sort of getting ready for this stuff and, and throwing out stuff, including one of Bill's old briefcases. Um, um, so I went to, I went up to Irving with a bunch of containers, you know, hanging file containers. And I brought maybe six and a half drawers worth up to town hall. And oh. the way they, the way the district does the filing, you know, our filing is chronological. Um, so we have, a, you know, a whole file for a year and within that year, the different categories. But at the district, the filing is by property. So, mm -hmm. so they have a file on every property they've ever had anything to do with, which means that some of those files Pendaflexes now have like one piece of paper in them. Right. So I was able to, by spending a little extra time in Irving, I was able to take away enough Pendaflexes to fill a drawer and a half in the in those cabinets. So already it's it's smaller than it might seem. The tricky part about this is going to be absorbing those files into ours. I'm guessing that 99 and 44 hundredths percent of them are going to go in the recycling bin. But there may be some cases where they have the original or they have something that I don't have or they have something more complete and stuff. And so I feel that I really need to go through them, keep anything that is good and throw away anything that is a duplicate. Otherwise, I would be throwing away um, official files. Right, which is kind of a no-no. So, so I guess I'm, I'm a little confused because Charlie, you, you know, he had a great tenure of service, but he's not the district, right? Well, so, so why, why is it that the towns are absorbing the files as opposed to- ra Rather than having the district absorb them? Right. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Hmm. I don't know, but it seems like it's better in general to have the files in the towns. Yeah. 
right? I mean, in, in the normal course of events, all our files, there would just be one set of files and they would be in Shootsbury, you know, where, where the work was done. Um, but this is kind of an anomaly because we had these outside contractors doing the work. And of course they, they, they got everything and they saw everything and they kept everything and they did correspondence and stuff. Um, so we end up having duplicates. So on the one hand, um, unless we were going to have a district file system somewhere and nobody has offered to house one, um, we, we one, have to absorb the files and make sure that we're not throwing away anything that's actually useful. And two, we have to figure out a system where this doesn't happen again. You know, where maybe Claudia, when she's done with a, with a file, either throws things away or gives them to me and I immediately either absorb them or discard them. Because, you know, I mean, this has been going on since like 1978. So there's a lot of files, but I mean, if, if I weren't doing like 50 years worth of files, um, 45, um, but just as they come in or on a yearly basis or something, it would be a lot more manageable, but I don't want somebody 45 years from now being in this same position. Right. Right. Won't be me, of course. Plus there's something to be said for digitizing all of this. And I know, I'm sure a lot more of it is now digitized than was, but yes. not. Right. But we still have, we still keep the paper files. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. When we, I like having I mean, a digital backup. Right. And, sure. Is, is I have in my mind that there's a committee in town that relates to like files and record keeping and I, I thought that, had, that there was, yeah. And that has to do with what, what we're required to keep. Right. All right. Um, hmm. Yeah, we probably keep things longer than is strictly required. <laughs> I kind of like to keep everything, but only one copy. Um, and um, mm -hmm. um, because we frequently get requests from engineers saying, send me anything you have about a particular address because I'm going to do a Title V there, or I'm going to design a new system there. And some of that stuff goes back far. I mean, if we're only supposed to be keeping it maybe 10 or 15 years, that's not going to be enough. Right. And we're not going to be able to provide right. the information that people need. So I really right. like to keep it all. But that that type of request speaks to the the soundness of the plan to file things by address as opposed to by year. Like if an engineer is saying, say, give me everything you've got for whatever Leverett Road, um, then we don't know what year that would be. Um Here's how we know. That. Here's how we know. We um, we when 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 Bill and I were working together on um, on file management, mm -hmm. the decision was made, and I'm not really clear on why to do it to do it um, chronologically, but we have a database, so we can look up the um. properties. Right. And we'll and we get the okay. file number of every of every property that comes up. I think I knew about that. Yeah. 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 So I, it's okay. kind of six of one, half dozen the other. Yeah. Okay. Right. I argued at the time for doing it by property, but um, mm. Bill talked me out of it, and I can't remember why. Yeah. Okay. But it was kind of good to have one system at the at the district and another system in the town, so that we had a kind of sure. cross reference. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing, so a, a thing that I found at town hall while I was trying to clear out some some old junk of which we had a great deal um, was envelope after envelope of district financial records, including including um, uh, canceled checks and stuff like that. 
um, mm. that were presumably, I'm guessing that they were filed in our cabinets by Gabriel when Gabriel was the district treasurer. And, but there's a big old cardboard box, you know, a crappy falling apart cardboard box full of this stuff taking up room in there. So as soon as I discovered it, I sent out an email to all the appropriate people I could think of saying, I want this out of here. It's not my job to keep these. But so far, nobody has stepped up. Of course, that, I think that was just yesterday. Hmm. So, and, and I mean, I don't know how recent it is, but some of that stuff goes back at least to 1998. Hmm. So, I mean, and I don't know, for, for that kind of thing, I don't know how much, how far back they have to keep their records and so on. I know it's because some of it's payroll and I've heard that you're supposed to keep payroll for basically forever and that's fine but i am not keeping it and we don't we've got space issues and boy irving town hall is incredibly huge and spacious but you probably have noticed that shootsbury town hall is not <laughs> so, yeah. so that's that's kind of kind of my update on on things <laughs> well has anybody talked with Sarah? I I had uh, some exchange with her around uh, some items that I wanted to donate of mom's mm -hmm. uh, in, in case she discovered that there was a need in town. And and uh, so she and, and the police chief talked about that. And I, I took some stuff up to her. Mm -hmm. said, are, are you speaking of medical equipment, may I ask? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, not durable, but, um, you know, okay. things like wraps and... I see. Okay. Um, I only ask because I have, because I have knee replacement coming up next month myself. I've been looking into um, availability of some kinds of medical equipment and the Franklin County Sheriff's Office as well as some other organizations accept donations of that sort of thing and then loan it out short term to residents, um, local residents. So, but I understand you're not talking about durable medical equipment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's that's also maybe a good thing to make sure that Sarah is aware of. Right. Well, right. That there is that system that, um, you know, if she encounters people who, you know, maybe need a, a wheelchair temp temporarily or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Right. And I, so I have not spoken with Sarah. I communicated with her if, uh, by email. To I can't, I'll, I'll remember it in a minute, but I forwarded one or two things along to her as an mm -hmm. FYI. And um, I'm blanking right now on what they are. But uh, Does anybody have any idea if she's getting any any business there? I do not. I, occasionally, occasionally, there's some women I hang out with at the AC club on um, on Thursday nights, and occasionally one of them will say that they met her, they went in and made her acquaintance, and mm -hmm. and found her delightful and lovely. But um, mm -hmm. I haven't had any sense that there's a lot of people coming in. Right. There've been uh, I I see her notes on a couple of um, COVID cases in Maven. Uh -huh. So I know she's made some calls and provided, you know, support regarding guidance and uh -huh. that sort of thing. But everyone involved seemed to already have received guidance from medical personnel. So, okay. of course, so she's she's monitoring Maven and following up on all of that. And of course, uh -huh. anybody who shows up in Maven, that was an official test. So medical providers were involved and. Mm -hmm. It's home tests where people may be, you know, n lacking professional advice. Um, and hardly anybody is communicating about that these days. Right. Yeah, I know we okay. occasionally get a yeah a, okay. an email from somebody. Right. Well, probably everybody knows what to do at this point. By this time, I think most people do. Yeah. Right. Right. I hear the new vaccine is coming out pretty soon. 
Yeah, it's supposed to be middle of this month is what I have heard. But Yeah, yeah, they were saying like the end of the month, but it sounds like it's moving up. Could mm -hmm. be, could be out in a week or two. Right. As soon as it comes out, I'll put out a, I'll put out a message. Okay. Is there anything else you think we should be messaging about? Not that I can think Until of. that right vaccine now. comes out, I don't think. Oh, that was what I forwarded along to Sarah. It was a, um, some sort of a request to respond to a survey regarding mobile vaccine clinics, I think. But it sounded um, to me mostly like it was looking for information from communities that are doing mobile vaccine clinics. Uh, I see. Uh-huh. Uh, but anyway, I forwarded it. Is that the, the email from Phoebe at for COG? I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if, and, and I, I, I also, as I forwarded, it, I said, you've probably already received this, but in case you haven't. Mm -hmm. Maybe not though. She might not be on that. Right. She might not be. Yeah. I'm thinking that, um, that the, our town newsletter is going to be coming out soon. And I think I have an idea that there might have been a mid or there might be a mid September submission date. And so if there is, we should put something in about Sarah. Yeah. And right. um, are flyers going to be available at the town birthday party coming up this weekend? I know there are thunderstorms possible that day, so I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 looking bad for that, actually. Um, yeah. Um, rain date is the 17th, which is not ideal because it conflicts with another event, but um, um, which is at the AC. Um, but yeah, yeah, the idea is to for town boards can have can have flyers and and uh, and it would be good if we could actually get Sarah to come yeah. there and, and meet people. But I will. And I had asked get in touch with via an email to the school principal and nurse um if our flyer as it stands now i know you don't think it's a very good flyer cat um but if the flyer could be included in the first edition of the um school newsletter and it was not i think there's a front office person who more directly handles that and maybe i will we don't have an updated, ver a better version of the flyer than the one. No, we don't. Not that's fond of. that's okay. something that I should be working on, but I haven't. I haven't but done the one that ever. we've got is accurate, if not. It great, is, yeah. It's accurate. Yeah. Okay. I may communicate with the front office person then and see if I can get that to go out in next week's um, or this current week's. Wait, today's yeah. oh no, today's Wednesday. It, well, it'll be too late for this week, but next week's. Um, what day? What day yeah. do they need it to go out on the Friday? Uh, good question. Um, mm. I'm not certain of that, but if I hustled and got it in tomorrow morning, possibly it would be included. Mm -hmm. Does that current flyer reflect uh, her revised hours? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right, and and those have been straightened out on the website. Both yeah. there are there are two there are two places where you can find her on the town website. One's on the home page, and one's on our page. And and one of them got got updated. Okay. And briefly, another one didn't. So there was conflicting information, uh, which which some some on the ball citizen called me on. I, mean, oh, I think we've got it. I think we've got it straightened out now. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, something goes out with um with something wrong or ambiguous in it. I get an answer within like five minutes. Uh, right? There are people out there from the have, same person, is it? <laughs> no, no, it isn't. But uh, there's plenty of people out there who are just you know sitting by their computers waiting for a town announcement. I see. And then there are all those hundreds that aren't on it at all. Right. 
Okay. Well, I'll get in touch with Sarah and see if she'll All right. see if and she'll I'll come to the party. And I'll communicate with the front office person at the school, see if it can go out in the school newsletter. Okay. Okay. Well, guys, I think we're done. All right. All right. I'll Can move we... to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Yes, Aye. indeed. Okay. okay. All right. Be well. All right. You guys. All right. Be well, everyone. Yes. Take care. How can I get off this? Jeez.